in conversation with Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman's A team. Joining us now on ET now is the Finance Secretary along with the Chief Economic Advisor. Sir, many thanks for taking your time out and speaking with us today at ET now. Let me first begin by asking you about uh, the fact that everybody is very happy that there are no tax increases in this uh, budget and which is what the markets are giving a big thumbs up to. A big allocation in, uh, with respect to infrastructure as well and very realistic tax projections. Uh, I want to understand from you, how did you manage to do all of that in one single budget? <laughs> you see, in this budget, what we have to say is that it was a very difficult time. You know, as a country, in fact, the whole world is facing a very difficult time because of this pandemic. Now, in this, you know, certain things are required and lots of things were done pre-budget through the various packages. Now in this budget, and of course, this is the first budget of this decade, and then the 75th year. So considering, you know, the importance of this, and particularly, you know, the, how the whole world is going to be post-pandemic, hmm. you know, we, we as a country had to position ourselves. And for that, certain things needed to be done. And that you can see in this entire this budget, you can see the uh, you know the whole philosophy behind this budget, is that there is a heavy and quite an emphasis, particularly on the health, because mm. the health is a very very important. Even though you know, I mean, we are at a certain pandemic, the vaccines have come, mm. but still you know we cannot afford to lower our guards, right. and therefore you know the health is going to be a very very important priority, and that is why you may have seen that our allocation for health is, uh, you know, the more than 130%. Mm. Yeah. And then the next big item is this infrastructure and then the capital investment. There, almost 34% increase. The 5,54,000 crores of rupees are, have been earmarked on this. And the even though our resources are limited, particularly because of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the stress on the revenue side, uh, we, ha we have not hesitated in spending because in such difficult mm -hmm. times you know the uh, you know it is the government which has to come out and you know spend and spend with certain quality in the right. sense that you know spend in a sector you know which it gives you the return and then the return you know what better could be than the infrastructure and the capital investment and that is why this entire in emphasis has been done in addition to that, you know, there are certain public assets, mm. you know, whether it is the public sectors or, mm. you know, the various other assets. How do you disinvest? Mm. How do you uh, actually, you know, monetize those assets? Right. And, you know, can use that money, uh, you know, for the, uh, you know, you know, the, for the for the public purposes. Right. So those are the things. And then agriculture. Agriculture is also very, very important areas. So this is what has been done. And to in such times to expect that every time that you know you do with this tax mm. tinkering, see the taxation part. I think you know what we need to follow is that there has to be a stability in the taxation. Right. To expect that you know in every budget, either there will be a tax increase or tax decrease. I don't think that you know in India as a country you know we can afford to do that, because there may be some people may be looking for the taxation. So, you know, one, uh, one figure I would like to share with you, that in a country of 130 crores, only about, you know, 1.7 crore people pay income tax. Right. So, therefore, you know, to expect that, you know, some tax will be increased or decreased. So, what are you trying to do? You are uh, trying to impact 1.7 oh, crore. Absolutely. And I will be talking about that, you know, with you, sir, in detail. But let me also take it across with the Chief Economic Advisor. This is for the first time that we've seen that the nominal GDP projections in the economic survey are much more aggressive than that uh, in the budget. The Finance Minister also said that there are two different departments working on them. But where is the optimism really coming in uh, from in terms of the Indian economy? And for the first time, we've seen a far more realistic assessment of the economy being done. Um, Ruchi, uh, I think before I respond to that question, I just want to make a couple of remarks on the big picture ideas in the budget and what I assess, uh, you know, what is my assessment of the budget. Um, this being the first budget of this decade, I think the budget has lived up to its billing um, because the steps that have been taken will actually really enable India not only to 
uh, you know, to, to get the growth that has been uh, anticipated in the coming year, but also really push India back into the high growth mm. path, uh, you know, of and, and potentially it's possible to 8% plus, uh, you know, in this decade. Because if you look at the, the various factor inputs, you actually have infrastructure, mm. you know, uh, physical infrastructure, and health for me is part of soft infrastructure right. because it affects labor. Um, you have finance, basically the financial sector, important reforms there. Taxation, you know, uh, lots of ideas that finance mm -hmm. secretary talked about. Right. So when you put all this together, you know, and the infrastructure, especially roads, you know, uh, railways, which actually affect your logistics costs right. and power, all these are factor inputs actually which make a big difference. Um, now, in terms of the uh, this particular year's estimate, um, the one key uh, aspect that I would mention is, you know, uh, two and a half percent is the budget estimate for infrastructure, two hundred two and a half percent of GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, now. Uh, you know, in the Indian context, if you look at the fiscal multiplier from infrastructure, um, in the year in which the, the spending happens, if you spend one rupee, the FISC spends one rupee, two and a half rupees basically the same year, you know, it's able to get. This is an NIPFP study. So now two and a half percent is being budgeted. So you take the multiplier, that translates to about six percent. So just six percent, you know, of, of the of the 11 percent, more than half is coming just from infrastructure right. together with the V-shaped, you know, rec recovery that ha that's happening. I actually do think that there's a there's a good chance we may actually do better than than what has been anticipated. So this is, you know, a, a budget where, you you know, this is actually under promised but very likely being over delivered. Are we likely to over deliver on the fiscal deficit as well in, in terms of <laughs> in terms of being able to not just uh, uh, you know being within the 6.8 percent target for next year but also perhaps under achieving it if the growth were to increase? In fact actually that's possible if you know because we know very well that if your GDP growth is higher tax revenues do increase significantly right. um, plus um, if you take into account the non-tax revenues and especially on the disinvestment side um, you know some of the transactions that are going to happen especially on the you know for instance the two public sector banks um, and the insurance company those have not been budgeted mm -hmm. uh, so that is also an underestimation uh, plus I think you know and this is this I have to emphasize um, having you know worked in the financial sector you know and and that being a pet area uh, along with the signature change I think in healthcare this year this budget might actually be looked at as a very very big change in terms of you know in the financial sector right. um, and you know even pre covid COVID, we're actually having you know challenges in the financial sector. So the uh, privatization of the public sector banks, the bad bank, um, you know, which is actually in the private sector, can really help to clean up balance sheets and bring credit growth back as well. On Friday, when I spoke to you, you told me ki sabr ka fal meetha hota hai, and perhaps that's what <laughs> oh, we're going to see. I will come on the question of uh, bad bank to you in just a while from now. But let me ask, uh, sir, as well, with respect to tax buoyancy, we're seeing just about a one percent uh, tax buoyancy being uh, being estimated at a time when the Indian economy is set to grow at 11 percent as per the economic survey why has the government then looked at a tax buoyancy of just about one percent is it for the fact that we want to be more realistic in our numbers or the fact that uh, I mean we do expect some kind of uh, hurdles on the way as well no in fact you know I don't know from where you are getting this tax buoyancy of one one percent if you see the uh, this nominal growth rate is around maybe you know between 14 to 15 percent, and what we have estimated here is 16.8 percent tax growth. If you compare that yeah, with yeah, this okay. current year, the 16.8 percent. So 16.8 percent is definitely you know it is it is in fact more than 1.1 percent. 1.1 percent. Yeah, more than 1.1. Yeah, it I will mean, be yeah. right. So this is the and this is the tax buoyancy that we have expected. And this also you should consider that in this current year, current year, if the let us say uh, se minus uh, you know seven point seven percent is the GDP, uh, you know the decline here.